Uh, yeah, so um, I thought I would uh, talk about the CDO Super 6 um, to, I don't know, let more people know about it and um, pass on what I know about it and um, also sort of go through my own process and figure out whether this is something I really want or whether this is something that um, I need versus want. Um, yeah, and trying to decide what polysynth I'd like to buy. Uh, so um, why don't I show you a couple of the patches which I have uh, made on this machine. Uh, one of my favorite ones is this one, which is like a vocal formant sound. Um, yeah, it kind of sounds like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's no effects. That's just a built-in delay and chorus, so I could turn them off, but that's part of the patch, um, you know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's quite an easy thing to get. You can hear that D tune kind of going on as well. Yeah, so that one's pretty cool. Um, I love that you can do a vocal form and sound on it, and you know it's really easy to get there. Um, I can show you that. We'll go shift and manual. And uh, yeah, we'll just bring down the filter a bit and resonance up around there. And uh, DDS2 is basically oscillator 2. So we can get that going at audio rates, which I will uh, put this up to um, two foot. And I'm going to put it to square wave and full. Um, like the highest pitch it goes. And you can already hear I'm doing it. it needs an envelope amount with a slower attack. Uh, you can make that even sound massive by doing this super DDS thing. So that's a different version to what I made. The one I made is... Um, my other favorite patch is the one at the end of this bank, so bank A um, and number 8. It's like this bird chirping kind of sound. Um, there's this sort of sub bass stuff going on and then um, that's where this... Uh, it's like full resonance. I think I'd have trouble making this patch again actually. Um, but yeah, it's basically full resonance on the filter, I think. And up here, there's some still lovely sort of tonal stuff going on. So um, down here is the birds. And then, yeah, up here is kind of the start of that, this patch pad. Yeah, that one's really cool. I, I think I'd have trouble making that again because I sort of made it by accident. So, um, But yeah, it did definitely have the drive on full on that one. I think you can tell when you change this. It's like, it's a bit squealy everywhere. Yeah, 
sort of uh, the drive, the second drive, um, kind of tames the resonance. I think that's the basic recovery one. Okay, uh, there is a keys patch in here somewhere, which is I used in a song recently. Um, I just have to find it. That's not it, but it's cool. This is one of the default patches. So yeah, that's awesome. It reminds me of actually the Prophet 6. There's a patch like that on the Prophet 10 or Prophet 6. Um, and um, one th special thing about the Prophet 6 is that it actually has a built-in distortion. So over here, which is a bit off camera, unfortunately, um, is this, can I show it in the camera? It's this Electroharmonics Operation Overlord. It's a um, stereo distortion. And um, yeah, this just adds a lot of uh, yeah fuzziness and distortion, which you don't have to have much of it on. Um, I just got to test the level here. So that's off. Yeah, just sounds awesome. <laughs> if I played keys better, I could write a whole song on that, and I reckon it'd be a hit. <laughs> Need to practice and get out of C minor. Uh, what else is here? Yeah, not mine, but yeah, it's um, movie soundtrack stuff. Yeah, 
maybe uh, let's just go and start a new patch, which you can hit this shift button here, and there's a manual button over there, and it resets whatever patch you're on, which I'm on bank C patch eight. And it will put it back to a sawtooth. And um, as you can hear, there's a bit of There's a bit of natural cycling there. They're pretty locked in, but there's a bit of natural cycling. You can go and change um, the stability of the tuning um, with this sort of shift and detune thing. Yeah, in that sort of middle position is where I've had it before. In this DDS1, so you can go and turn on um, just a sine wave here. Doesn't necessarily sound stereo. The effects are stereo. But you can kind of get a bit of a chorusing thing going on with this section here, this thing called Super DDS. And that's basically... Um, uh, it's like uh, polyphonic unison. Now we put it back to just a sine wave. We'll have a listen to the filter. So yeah, I think it's a pretty nice sounding filter. It's got some party tricks too. It's got this um, fixed uh, sort of low pass, uh, low, sorry, fixed high pass. So yeah, and then it's also got a high pass, um, which is tracking the, um, filter position, so it's basically bandpass. Uh, we'll go to this envelope here, which is going to be to envelope one, uh, which you can change that here, but it's assigned to envelope one to begin with. Well, this is a loopable envelope, so...
done sort of the DDS1 and oscillator 1. We did the filter and the sort of little controls in there. I didn't do the drive yet. I'll show you the drive on the filter. Yeah, there's a base recovery circuit there on um, drive setting 1. Drive setting 2 is actually like a overdrive. I'll just listen to um, oscillator 2. Uh, there's a second LFO down here, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to go to this slider here and switch that on. So now it's like a direct setting, um, which you can see that's the speed. It's a triangle wave and uh, DDS2 is going to be, you know, if you put it on before, it's a bit ridiculous. <laughs> So that sound we're hearing now is actually uh, the DDS-1. Um, I put the octave range of the key bed all the way low, and then I'm now mucking around with this uh, single cycle waveforms, uh, which it has loaded in. So when you go to this single cycle waveforms, it does that to say, hey, I'm in uh, wave mode instead of patch mode. But yeah, we'll do these um, single cycle waveforms for a moment. Uh, so we're in wave mode.
So this is actually pretty cool. Oscillator 2 is totally different from Oscillator 1. This here is now like your pulse width, um, the pulse size. So, um, that's your um, regular sort of pulse width. And here you can see it's got a different shape um, to the one in Oscillator 1. Oscillator 1's just got a regular sort of square wave shape. This one's got a um, square, wave sh uh, square wave shape, but then it's also got a little um, graphic to show you that it can change position and size. So. Which kind of gives you that, um, I don't know, kind of towards that electric piano sound. Like I can imagine making an electric piano sound out of that tone. Obviously not that thin. Um, let's see if I do, we've got pitch modulation over here for LFO1.
All right, last bit I'll do here, um, and I'll wrap it up because I've been going for ages, is um, doing a bit of uh, modulation via the CV or expression pedal input, and it's going to be out of the Matriarch um, modulation uh, section, which is going to be a staircase LFO, uh, which is also being clocked by my Octatrack over here. Um, so it should be um, in time with my drums, which I'll also play. So thank you for uh, watching me do this. I think um, it's, it won't be for everyone, but the people that want to hear how this synth sounds, um, I think I've sort of gone through a lot of the stuff which I've found so far. So um, I missed a bunch as well once again, but uh, I will do the mod matrix this time. So um, yeah, that's where the CV will come into play. Anyway, cool. Let's actually plug that in.